We're live. I think we're live. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Trading Bitcoin with your host Tone Vase. No guests today. I didn't want to bother people on this holiday weekend. Um, I'm back in the woods. Probably shouldn't have left that branch above the fire, but that's all right. I don't think it'll catch fire. Uh, if it does, that I'll, you'll see me. Uh, <laughs> You know, I let you move it because if I'm doing screen share, I don't see what's going on behind me. And uh, there's not that many trees around, but having a fire on top of a fire is not a good idea. Uh, okay, ah, that was not smart. Boom. Uh, uh, so, what better way to spend a uh, Sunday morning? Uh, it's actually really nice out. It was cold earlier. Wearing uh, the buy the dip shirt. Shout out to anyone who knows who created this shirt. We're talking years ago now. You know who you are. You don't watch my videos no more, but shout out. <laughs> All right, let's do some Q&A, guys. Um, uh, no guests. Uh, I've also been thinking, um, since I don't have a Patreon or anything like that, um, I might just, but I have my own registration site, I might do like a longer format Q&A, like a three to four hour Q&A as a webinar. And we'll charge a reasonable price for it, somewhere between 50 and 100 bucks, as low as 50, no more than 100 and uh, maybe I'll even do it this upcoming weekend, uh, maybe this upcoming Saturday if I'm free. Uh, so uh, let me know what you think about that. Maybe I'll send out a, a poll. Uh, like if people would pay for like a four hour Q&A, we can talk about any stocks that you like, any assets, uh, kind of similar to what, I may, what I'm going to do here now. But over there, you can send in your questions ahead of time. Um, I will make sure I answer all of them. If I have to stay on longer to answer them all, I will. Like everyone gets at least, you know, I, I can guarantee that for every person that asks a question, like at least three of your questions will be answered, you know, uh, for all those that register. And you get to listen to all the other ones and it'll be private. It's not going to be public like this. Uh, so you can ask whatever you like and then uh, it may or may not be recorded, but it's not going to be, you know, publicly available. Um, the common question, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and go through your questions. I mean, the, the box scrolls, Bitcoin motorist, good call. That is Barbie. This is Barbie's shirt. That, that is the buy the dip from Barbie. All right, let me see. My one seven thousand. I I don't know, and no one does either, right? Well, let's be realistic about this. Um, I don't know when seven thousand is going to happen. Do I think seven thousand is going to happen? Yes. Do I think it will happen sooner than later? Well, what's your definition of sooner, right? Because um, as you saw from my last two guests on my channel, both Socrates and uh, DJ Thistle. Uh, they think that 7,000 is going to happen sooner than I do. Uh, so Thistle said that if 7,000 doesn't happen in the next two weeks, it's never going to happen. I disagree with that view. I think it's more likely that 7,000 happens in October than in the, la than in the next two weeks. Uh, Socrates uh, wasn't that specific about it, but Socrates thinks that uh, 7,000 is more likely to happen sooner than later as well. Now, he didn't say that if it doesn't happen very soon, it won't happen at all. Socrates is perfectly fine with 7,000 happening later in a year, but he thinks it's more likely to happen in September uh, than in October based on his trades. Not that I want to speak for him. Um, I think it's a little more likely to happen in October than in September. Does it have to happen? Of course not. Uh, do I think it's going to happen? Yes, I do. And in order for me to think something is going to happen, I need a slightly greater than a 50% chance for me to say that. Only when something is 50-50 do I think, uh, do I not provide any opinion? Okay. Shorting BSV to zero, thoughts. Uh, it's dangerous, right? So 
because Calvin Air has unlimited money. Uh, Calvin Air is like the U.S. government, right? I mean, the, the guy's one of the richest guys in the world. And who knows what's going to happen, right? Like he can pump, pump it alone. So I, I don't like messing around with scams or penny stocks. So I stay away from it. All right, let's see what else we got. Tone, do you only sell Bitcoin to people you know, or do you actually sell on the exchange to liquidate? I'd rather not answer that. Uh, and I don't want to answer it. I don't even own an entire Bitcoin, for the record. Uh, it's uh, for OPSEC reasons. Uh, it's better that I talk less. So I can't answer your question. I, Tone, always enjoy your streams. Keep up the great work. Uh, Tone, nice to join the session. Um, here's a common question. And the common question is, why do you stream but not trade? Uh, well, for the same reason Doug Polk streams about poker, but he has recently retired from playing poker. It's, um, I enjoy it. It's a different lifestyle, right? It's, I was trading even actively a year and a half ago, but the more I travel and the more I stream, the less I can concentrate on trading. Now, like, look at me right now. If the market crashes right now, 1,000 points, I am not there to see it because I'm doing this, right? I'm looking at the camera and I have the fire behind me. I'm here in Pennsylvania. I was here for the weekend with the family. Um, I enjoy... Um, I enjoy taking, I'm enjoying taking a break from actual trading. If I wasn't traveling, I can trade and do YouTube. I can't do all three things, right? I already don't have much of a life, right? So let's scratch that one. Um, I don't have much of a life. It'd be based on my lifestyle already, right? I have the YouTube channel and my YouTube channel isn't only about trading. My YouTube channel is the law show, the news show. The crypto scam show that might come back tomorrow. I'm, I'm getting ready to do a video, right? Um, education uh, that I teach around the world. The YouTube itself takes up time. A million people texting me and asking me questions. Hundreds of people wanting to work with me and I turn everybody down. Um, uh, like, it's a different lifestyle. You can't do it all. And at the moment, it's trading that's taking a break. Let me screen share for a second. Speaking of price of Bitcoin, haven't even checked it this morning. I'm assuming it hasn't changed much. Let's see. Just want to check the price. We'll talk about the price a little bit after. Ah, uh, one second, guys. Got to handle something real quick. Okay, I'm back. So the price hasn't moved much. We're at five, six. Okay, so we can stop screen share for a minute and uh, wait, not that. Okay, here we go. So it's a different lifestyle and um, I do what I like. Like, I don't have to do what you like. I do what I like. And uh, for the time being, I like not trading. I also hate being distracted when I do trade. Uh, maybe in the future when, you know, maybe in the future when I settle down somewhere, or let's say I have a family, I may not do video streams anymore. I may still stream, right? So to me, I don't like trading with distractions. I like to concentrate on trading. Would I have a problem live trading uh, on video? No, not at all. I have the confidence that I, I've made money trading before. I have, I have the perfect confidence uh, to show my trades in live trade. However, um, you don't get everything, right? So if I was to live stream my trades, I would be impossible to talk to, like literally impossible. We're talking no YouTube live chat, no YouTube comments, um, no email. Like I would have an away message on my email. I would have an away message on my Telegram. 
Um, if I uh, if I was to like live trade and maintain my YouTube channel, the only way I would do it for my mental sanity is to have zero distractions. So you have two options. Either I don't trade and you have the ability to communicate with me, or I do trade and you can see it, but you have zero ability to communicate with me. It will be impossible to ask me the simplest question. It will be impossible to tell me, Tone, your screen share is not working. It, it just, I mean, there'll be like a handful of friends, you know, like I'm sure Bitcoin Motorist can get a hold of me and uh, several others that are moderators in this chat. So they would be able to get a hold of me, but that's it. And I, will, I don't want to make their life miserable, right? Like I don't want like 300 people texting Bitcoin Motorist saying, tell Tone this, <laughs> because he's going to tell you all to go to hell. But uh and if that starts happening, then he will lose his uh, communication with tone privileges. So uh, I, I can't do it all. And this is the path that I currently chose. And we'll see how that goes. No one has to watch my channel, right? If you want to watch a trader that, that trades live so you can follow him, that's great. But you're not going to learn anything, right? Uh, this channel tries to teach you something. Ethereum is a dumpster fire. I agree. It always has been. Most people just haven't realized it. All right, let's see what else we got on the question. Do I think Craig Wright will have access to the Tulip Trust? Of course not, guys. That's ridiculous. That's just crazy talk. Tone, please look at the big weekly Bitcoin chart. I see a huge descending triangle forming. What do you think? Well, Michael, I don't think you've been, you might not have been watching my channel for a while. Um, if I do go to screen share, I don't see a huge descending triangle on the weekly chart, but I have been talking about it on the daily chart, on a daily chart. And um, I think Socrates said he sees this more as a symmetric triangle, which is also valid. Uh, in a perfect world, like this is not a perfect descending triangle to me until we touch the top of the triangle one more time. I need one more touch of the upper side of the descending triangle in order for me to really, really fall in love with this triangle. We have to touch the top and then we have to come back and approach the middle or the bottom half of this triangle. I would love to see the top touched twice and the bottom touched at least one more time, but we don't have to. Uh, but this is the early stages of a triangle. Now, everyone in their mother that's trading is now looking at this triangle. What does that mean? Does it mean it's still gonna break down? Maybe the one last year still did, you know? I was talking about this triangle for feels like six months and eventually it did break down uh, the way it was supposed to. So just because everyone is looking at it uh, doesn't mean that the self-fulfilling prophecy will not happen. Should I use leverage as a stock trader? Um, I never liked leverage as a stock trader. However, let me, let me rephrase that. I loved leverage as a stock trader because I traded stocks with options and options provide a ridiculous amount of leverage. I know my options webinar was kind of expensive and I'm planning to do another one. This was my first run. I didn't want to be embarrassed. So I didn't want too many people in it. Uh, and uh, the few people that did join it, as far as I know, they all loved it. I had amazing feedback after my options webinar. I'm going to be offering that options webinar one more time, maybe this winter. Uh, maybe it'll be something that I do every six months. And the next one will be a lot better because now I had one full practice run at that options webinar. And options can provide ridiculous leverage when it comes to trading stocks in a safer way. Uh, great guests. Do you plan to give preview of, our, of your options webinar? Uh, previews of other ones will be great. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna break up that options webinar or maybe after I do one more with better slides and more experience, I'll break up that options two day webinar. Like I like, you know, ripping the bandaid and doing it all at once. So what I might do is I might break up that options webinar. I'll be more structured next time 
and I'll break it up into four parts, uh, the options webinar. And then the very first part is just the introduction, and that would be cheap. Maybe that one is going to be like a few hundred bucks. Uh, and, then, uh, and then they'll just get scaled and more expensive uh, because I think that, uh, so, so the way the options webinar was, it was two days. The first half of day one was literally definitions. I didn't really teach any strategy there. So that would be cheap just to understand what the hell this option stuff is all about. It's all like theoretical, really. Uh, then the second half of day one was using options uh, with stocks. So it was covered calls, protective puts, calendar spreads, and using leap options as proxies uh, for stocks in, ca in uh, covered calls. So it was all, you know, low, it was all strategies to complement a stock trader. Then the first half of day one, sorry, the first half of day two was all about directional trading with options. So these are your buying calls and puts for speculation, uh, bull call spreads, bear put spreads, uh, call ratio back spreads, put ratio back spreads, like my favorite directional leveraged uh, trading strategies. And then the second half of day two was, uh, was direction neutral strategies. So these were uh, more like your straddles, strangles, condors, uh, things like that, you know? Uh, and that was my specialty, the direction neutral stuff. Uh, so maybe I'll just sell them in pieces. And then uh, if you, the, the first one, the introduction will be cheap. And if you like it, you buy the next one. If you like it, you buy the next one. And if you buy them all as a package, there's a discount. Whoa, the live chat just jumped a lot. I'm going to look at price charts in a second. If I go too slow, um, I have to find out where I was. Why can't we organize a 51% attack? And I'm not looking at price right now, so I can. Um, we'll look at price in a few minutes, guys. I'm also limited on battery life. So once my battery starts to die out, that's where this thing will end. I don't have a plug right now for my computer out here by the fire. Yeah, fire's doing okay. All right, let me see. Uh, I may skip some questions. Like it, it's hard. There's a lot of questions in the live chat. Uh, back in the day, I had somebody, you know, filtering good questions. Um, hey, motorist, if you're on, if you want to filter good questions for me. Um, we'll see. Yeah, motorist, if you want to... If you want to filter questions, just um, I have Telegram open as well, so you can just ping me there. I mean, and the, otherwise, I'll just you know grab what I see. Um, alts are going up with Bitcoin. Um, well, sure, uh, alts often go up with Bitcoin. The question is, are they going up faster than Bitcoin or not? Why traders care of small dip and miss 300% move? It depends on your trading horizon. If you're a short-term trader, you don't care about the big move, right? Like back when I was day trading the S&P 500, uh, I would trade every day. And if you ask me at the end of the month, did the S&P, was the S&P flat? Was it up 5%? Was it up 20%? Uh, was it down 10%? I would tell you, I have absolutely no idea. I have zero clue whether I missed a 400% a move in the S&P. I'm a day trader. You know, my goal is to make money every day on a day trade. I'm trying to buy the dip. I'm trying to short the, the, the high uh, that day. And it's irrelevant to me on a big move. Um, on a, if we're talking Bitcoin, why did I miss the 300% upswing? Well, for starters, I have a hodl position, which everyone should have known about because I was the laughing stock in the bear market when people said, why didn't you sell or short the top? And my answer was, because I don't want to miss the big move up because it can happen at any moment. 
So I was willing to hold through the bear market. So I was fine. Um, if you are not fine, then your strategy was wrong. Uh, this is an educational channel. The reason why I didn't care for that big move in Bitcoin this year was because I didn't trust it and I didn't like it. It didn't make sense to me. And I would rather buy Bitcoin. Let's say, um, let's say we get the correction that I expect. I'm still confident in it, right? I would rather buy Bitcoin at six or seven thousand dollars next year than at five thousand dollars earlier this year, because to me that was dangerous. I'd rather buy Bitcoin at a higher price and have that Bitcoin go up to 100,000. Like that doesn't matter to me, right? Everybody is different. Uh, you're supposed to watch this channel for educational advice, not trading advice. If you're watching my channel for trading advice, uh, you're gonna have a very, very, very big problem. And let me tell you something, no matter which YouTuber you watch for free trading advice, you're gonna eventually gonna end up losing all of your money. Um, the only way to succeed is by learning how to do it yourself or giving it to a professional money manager. Unfortunately, Tyler is no longer with us and I don't have another professional money manager that I can possibly recommend. So if your best bet is to follow a paid trading group, um, and, and I have friends that do these, right? Like my friend Van Zen. Um, is the only one that I kind of sort of recommend. Uh, if you absolutely must have, you know, a, a trading leader that you follow, uh, the only reason why I would recommend Van Zen is has nothing to do with his, you know, trading performance. It has to do that I trust him as a person. And uh, that trust, obviously anything can happen, right? Uh, because uh, I, I can't recommend anyone else because I don't, I don't, I don't know them. Right, I don't know them. Uh, the only reason I even recommend Ben Zen is because I trust him as a person. Uh, I've never followed his trading method. I've always followed my own method. I teach people to follow their own method. I never ever recommend following a trading leader. I've done that in my early career of trading and I've always regretted it. And uh, the best trading results I ever had in my life is when I stopped listening to other people and didn't follow anybody else and made only my own choices. All right, hey Mel, I see you in my uh, Telegram. Um, oh, okay, oh, oh uh, Bitcoin Motorist is on too. Yeah, hey Bitcoin Motorist, if you see any good questions, throw them in there and I'll take the questions you prioritize first, otherwise I'll just scroll through the chat. Let me see if there's any other good questions here. How much Bitcoin should the average Joe accumulate? It's not about having the number of Bitcoin, it's about how much net worth do you have. I think putting five to 10% of your savings in Bitcoin is a reasonable uh, choice. It's enough money that a person should be willing to lose and uh, Bitcoin is still speculative. Now, if you understand the inner workings of Bitcoin and you believe in Bitcoin's future like I do, it's okay to have more. Uh, but if you're sk still skeptical about Bitcoin, five to 10%, if you believe that some old coin can take over, 5% uh, is good enough for you. I'm sorry, Tom, I can't tell you how much coins you should have in cold storage uh, to be able to retire in five years. Nobody knows the answer to that. Too many people expect a dip. Sure. So what does that mean? Uh, what does that mean, Lime? If too many people ex expect a dip, it means one of two things. One, the dip's not going to happen. Or two, the dip's going to be bigger, right? Uh, remember, we had a big dip. If I go back to screen share, if I go to the daily chart, oh, come on. Those oh, yeah, good. I was going to say, is it going to start doing it again? Remember, um, all throughout this run-up, I was waiting for a dip of at least 30%, at least 30%, ideally 40 and above. 
did I get my dip? I did. I initially got the dip right here from 14,000 to about 9.6 where we are right now. That was exactly a 30% dip. Was that enough of a dip? But look what happened. We made a slightly lower high and then we made a lower dip. The one that was 34% from the top. Now, what does that mean, right? A lot of people thought this was the dip. This was my minimum requirement for a dip, but we went lower. So what happens, right? If a lot of people were expecting the dip and they got the dip of 34% and they went all in off that dip, but this wasn't the dip. The dip's still coming off of this triangle, right? So it's one of two things. You know, you expect the dip like myself to come all through uh, ever since we broke 5.4 thousand. I was looking for that 30 plus percent dip to buy in. And what happened? The market kept going higher and higher and higher. I finally get the dip that I wanted. And I don't, and I think it's going to go much lower. So if everyone is expecting a dip of X, either the dip of X doesn't come or the dip of X is actually 3X and the dip is three times bigger. So what does that mean? What does that mean for a 30% dip to be three times bigger? Well, a 90% correction is probably a little too, a little much, but a 60% correction is reasonable. What's 60%? off of 14,000. Well, we just saw 33% where we fell to nine from 14. That's a $4,000 drop. So another 4,000 off of 9,000, that takes you down to 5K. So if everyone's waiting for the dip, those are your two options. Either the dip's going to be bigger and nastier or you ain't going to get it. And that's why it's good to be in the asset that's as unpredictable as Bitcoin. Uh, for the long term and try to uh, create. And if you're going to trade, trade with 10 to 20% of the Bitcoin that you hodl to try and create more Bitcoin. And if you realize you're not a good trader and all you're doing is, is losing, maybe dollar cost averaging is the way you should be going. All right, let's see what else we got. Tone, when you sell your HODL or for a trade, if you ever choose to do it again, where do you sell? Um, I don't discuss that anymore. Um, me talking too much about what I do with my positions has cost me more money than you can possibly imagine. And it's not because of the position. It's because of talking about the position. If you had enough money to move the market, would your trading strategy be any different? Absolutely. Um, I learned to trade with a small amount of capital and the small amount of capital dependent, uh, was dependent on you know, me properly analyzing the market, not moving the market. Uh, this, is why, uh, this is also why I've never won a poker tournament. In, in my own poker tournament at Unconfiscatable, uh, I made the final table. I outlasted many pro players and I made the final table. I've never actually won at the final table. I'm not a great poker player when I have the big stack. Uh, most people are dying to get the big stack uh, because they're good pushing smaller players around. That is not my forte. I'm actually a better poker player when I'm not the big stack at the table. And, um, and that's because kind of, that's kind of how I learned to play poker. And I've never really honed in my poker skills. Uh, moving other players around by having a lot of capital. And my trading is the same way. I don't like to trade uh, any asset where I can move the price of that asset. That is not my specialty. And not a single one of my trading strategies would probably work in that environment. And in fact, I would probably lose a lot of money. So I try to only trade the most liquid assets. I would rather trade Amazon than some penny stock. People still believe that futures 
are in place to keep Bitcoin price artificially low. I think that is nonsense and ridiculous. I don't even want to get into it. It's the same nonsense that gold futures are keeping the price of gold artificially low. I think it's nonsense. Max Kaiser and I will disagree till we both die on this one. Uh, gold futures are not there to, uh, you know, to keep the price of uh, gold artificially low. Otherwise, gold wouldn't be pushing $1,600 right now. Why can't we organize a 51% attack? Well, try to do it and you'll know why. Um, Mr. Gupta, thank you for joining me from India. Was there back in February. Not sure when I'll be back. I do enjoy talking a lot. Isn't that obvious? Thanks, Bags. Hey, Tone, what additional information data does institutional traders have over retail traders? Uh, that's a good question. It's not that they, the additional data that they have is the resources to find that information. So if you're an institutional trader, you have an analyst and you can hire that analyst to say, hey, for the next two days, I want you to dig into Lyft. Well, what does that mean? Like, do you have time? Do you have time to devote 40 hours a week to analyzing Lyft from a fundamental perspective? Uh, do you have uh, the ability to say, spend an entire week uh, taking Uber rides on somebody else's dime, asking Lyft drivers about their experience with Lyft and how much they get paid. Uh, do you have the time to watch Lyft for an entire week, right? Like who's paying you to do this? An institutional investor, um, let's say a big hedge fund is thinking about uh, going in big on Lyft. What can he do, right? Uh, they have a lot of money. They have a lot of capital. They have a lot of resources. They can hire an intern and say, your job is to do nothing but ride Lyft all day and all night for the next week. Um, go watch the movie Billions. They literally send an intern, like a master's in finance trading intern, to be a janitor uh, because there was this company that was hiring like illegal, like illegal Indians, uh, Indians from India um, to be janitors and like uh, abusing them and like taking their paychecks and doing illegal stuff. And um, they had to send an intern into that company as a janitor. The guy is getting paid. Uh, interns at hedge funds get paid good money. Uh, or uh, uh, they, they still do. And they literally send, or, or they can send like an analyst, right? To literally be a janitor. Because if he gets the right inside scoop uh, on what's going on there, they can short the shit out of the company and expose the illegal activity. And then the company crashes and they make a lot of money on the stock. Is that insider trading? Of course not, right? They sent an analyst in to find out what's going on. So uh, just like a hedge fund can literally pay an intern to ride lifts all day and Ubers all day and get the real scoop on the ground, right? Like, like hey, uh, Lyft is treating their drivers terribly and Uber looks like it's improving. So maybe we should, you know, short one long the other or just hire someone to uh, go through the books right? Get your own take on what's going on there. So this is the kind of information that institutional investors have that you don't, because if you are to spend an entire week spending money on analyzing Lyft, how, where is that money coming from? How are you paying to analyze Lyft? Uh, so so that, that, that's how they have a lot more information than you. And that's why technical analysis is so much better for a retail investor than uh then fundamental analysis. A retail investor is incapable of doing fundamental analysis. 
it's not that they're not smart enough to do it, is that they don't have the resources, nor the time, nor the capital, unless you are the type of retail investor that has a team of interns. If you, have, if you are that profitable as a trader and you have, let's say, five interns doing fundamental analysis for you, then fundamental analysis will work for you. But you're still competing with people with a lot more resources than you. Oh, by the way, Florida State lost its opening game to Boise State. That means I no longer have to watch college football the rest of the year. And it's just going to be Clemson and Alabama uh, beating everyone by 40 points anyway. Maybe Georgia uh, will get in there. I don't think uh, there could be. I don't think Oklahoma is going to be uh, that great this year. So it's uh, Georgia has a chance uh, to knock out Alabama. Otherwise, it's just going to be Clemson. Uh, but hey, there's upsets all the time. So who knows? Would you trade the TD monthly? Probably not. Uh, I prefer the TD weekly and daily. I wouldn't necessarily trade the TD monthly, but I, I would pay attention to the TD monthly. Can you talk about stocks in the trade war? Unfortunately, I can't talk about the trade war because I've been a little too busy uh, keeping up with the news of the trade war. And uh, again, when you look at a, and um, I've been warning Joe Saz about this all the, uh, for the last two weeks. Uh, Joe's been doing really good as a trader. Uh, Joe, Joe Saz on my channel all the time. And he's been doing really good and now he just started his YouTube channel. He'll figure out how to do screen share eventually. He started his uh, little Telegram group that has grown to a few hundred people. And I see the insane number of messages. And every time I see Joe, I just warn him. And this is what I tell him, Joe, the more attention you give to other people, the more challenging it will be for you to trade. So my ability to do economic analysis on the markets has greatly deteriorated the more attention I give to people. Like I don't have the opportunity to read Trump's tweets and a couple of economic bloggers that I used to read or even, you know, what did I used to do at 8.30 in the morning back in the day, even like three, four years ago when I was already a YouTuber? 8.30 in the morning on weekdays, I would be looking at the economic reports, you know, the, um, the unemployment report, the, the Fed statements. I, I knew when the Fed statements were coming, for God's sakes. Uh, I, I still get daily emails from institutional investors on their outlooks to the markets. I used to read those daily. I don't have time for that anymore. So... Uh, I used to, I, I, you know, I, I still get a lot of proprietary reports, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan. I, you know, I still have friends in, in high places that, uh, that I get these reports from, but I have no time to read them. So my ability to analyze the economic trade war has been so diminished that it's hard for me to comment on it. I can only speak from experience of what happens in these things from back when they were happening when I was actively following them at the time and lately i've been only dependent on technicals is it enough to only depend on technicals and be a successful trader yes and i say that from experience you can disagree and that's fine you don't have to watch this channel but my but because i'm sitting here chatting with you guys and not reading about the trade war it's hard for me to comment on the trade war do you consider bullish S&P bullish Bitcoin? Yes, I do. It seems like it's now moving more with gold. They're all moving with each other. Um, I think the S&P, I think uh, the increased value of Bitcoin has been greatly benefited by the increased value of the S&P. When the S&P goes up, companies do well. People make money. People have good jobs because they're making money. It makes it easier for those people 
to invest in something speculative like Bitcoin because the opposite is very, very bad. If there is an economic disaster and people are losing their jobs, you'll see uh, people selling the Bitcoin that they have instead of buying more Bitcoin because what are you going to buy Bitcoin with? One of the biggest mistakes that I made is quitting my job in early 2015 when the price of Bitcoin was in the dumpster. And I realized real quick that when you lose, a, when you quit a $120,000, $130,000 job, whatever the hell I was making at the time, when you quit a job like that, uh, you no longer have the money to buy Bitcoin. And I had no idea how I, I would even make money from doing this. And I was trading. So I spent 2015 and 16 trading the markets. And while I was making money trading the markets, uh, I still didn't, I, I, I had to make up for a hundred plus thousand dollar income in trading. And if you don't have a million dollar account, that's not exactly easy to do. Uh, and uh, I, I couldn't buy a single Bitcoin because I didn't have the, uh, the capital. I didn't have revenue coming in. I didn't have money coming in in 2015 to buy any Bitcoin at $200 a pop, 200, 250, as it went all the way up, right? I was uh, dependent on what I had. So I couldn't buy any Bitcoin at the low because I didn't have money coming in. If I would have quit my job a year or a year and a half later, that would have been different. I could have been buying up a lot of Bitcoin at three to $400 back in all throughout 2015. So, so think about that, right? Think about what would happen. Um, uh, I, Luke, you asked the question, right? Just think about it. Um, do you have a job? I'm going to assume yes, because most people have a job. Do you buy Bitcoin? Sure. How do you pay for that Bitcoin? From your salary. Imagine if you lost your job tomorrow. How much Bitcoin are you going to be buying? Where are you going to get that money to buy the Bitcoin? Tone, at what point would you accept that Bitcoin has been fully adopted and move on to other interests? What other non-Bitcoin content are you interested in uh, pursuing? So when spending your Bitcoin is as easy and as safe as spending your US dollars, this may not come for another 10 years. I may not be around doing this in 10 years. If I do any other content, it would be... Um, probably nutrition. Um, I still want to go back to school. I want to go get another master's degree in nutrition and see if I can uh, do something in that realm. If I don't get too old to do that. Dude, you're a bit, bit old starting a family now. <laughs> that is so not true. I may be old in age, but I can certainly keep up with kids right now and for the next 10 to 15 years because I'm in pretty good shape and uh, my diet's in check. You got any Bigfoot stories? No. Guys, trading isn't going anywhere. There are certain things you may not be able to do in, in life, right? So... This year alone, this year alone, I visited the Pyramids of Giza, the Colosseum in Rome, the Taj Mahal, and one more one, and Chichen Itza. That is one, one original Seven Wonders of the World and three of the new Seven Wonders of the World, right? So that's four out of eight Wonders of the World. Four out of eight. Uh, it's a weird uh, listing. Four out of the current eight wonders of the world I visited this year. And is that something I would enjoy better doing it at 40? I'm not 40 yet, but like, is that something you want to do when you're, when you're 20, when you're 40, or when you're 75, or when you're 60, right? I don't know if I'll... I'm expecting to make it to 60, but look at Tyler Jenks. Tyler Jenks was 70 years old and 
No one saw it coming. A heart attack? Got him. He just flew back from Europe. How many wonders of the world do you think Tyler has seen? I didn't ask him. I don't think he's been to any. Tyler didn't travel much. Tyler was too busy managing money for 30 or 40 years. I mean, I don't hold me to it, but I doubt Tyler Jenks saw any wonders of the world. I saw four this year. Is that something I want to say, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, and then do it when I'm 60 or 70 and then potentially have you know, a heart attack or who knows? The Yellowstone volcano could blow up. Anything can happen, right? But guess what I can do when I'm 70? I can trade. I can sit at home and trade when I'm 70. I can't travel and see the wonders of the world when I'm 70. I could. It's not going to be as fun, you know? Not going to be in as good a shape as I am now. So trading isn't going anywhere. I can always do it later. You got to think about your priorities in life. Do you think everyone can long Bitcoin with leverage at the same time? Uh, does it force the Bitcoin to go lower? Look, guys. Everyone is never going to do everything at the same time. No, it, it never happens. And if uh, when there's nobody left to buy, the price crashes. And when you're leveraged in the futures market, for every long, there's a short. So someone is losing money. You have to um, learn about the difference between, a, between zero-sum games and not zero-sum games. When you are... Um, when you trade stocks or when you hold crypto with no leverage, they're not zero sum. I mean, 10 years ago, there was zero money in crypto. Now there's $200 billion. That kind of got created out of nowhere. That's not zero sum. But everything in the option space is zero sum. Everything in the future space is zero sum. For every guy that is long the CMF future in Bitcoin, Someone is short the CMF future in Bitcoin. So for everyone that loses money, somebody makes money. That's not the same when it comes to you know, owning an asset. Oil was worthless in the 1800s. Now it's valuable. Can you draw a descending triangle on a three day and have three touches on both top and bottom? Maybe you should be able to do that yourself. You don't need me for that. What's your opinion with Binance margin trading? I hate Binance. I think Binance is, I think what Binance did is very scammy. Uh, having a security token as a utility token. I think that's a scammy practice. And INX is following suit. Uh, the market smells, uh, well, um, let, let me be politically correct here. I don't like Binance, guys. I, I don't, I, I've never traded on Binance. I've never won a trade on Binance. I think what CZ did is scammy. I think the BNB token is equivalent to a Ripple token. It's a security of a company uh, pretending to be a utility in order to pump the security of the company in price. All right, let me see. If there's any questions. When is the next episode with another trader? I don't know, probably next week. I enjoyed the Da Vinci one. Uh, yeah, glad you enjoyed the Da Vinci one. Hey, Crypto Chain. How many live viewers we have? 
650, not bad. Are you going to interview Bitcoin Ben? I don't know who Bitcoin Ben is. Guys, I don't pay attention to other people. I don't have the time. I'm sorry if that bothers you. Tone, do you really believe 100% of altcoins will die 100%? No, I believe 98% of altcoins will die at 98%. Do I know which two altcoins out of 3,000 are going to survive? I don't. Uh, that's not a bet I'm going to make. Um, and what does that mean, survive? It means they just they have some kind of relevance. Do I think it's a good investment? No. Do I think overstock.com has relevance? Yes. Have I ever shopped there? No. I think Bo Poli is a scammer. I don't know Dante. I know Peter Brandt, but I don't know if Peter Brandt wants to get on a YouTube channel. I don't know if he's ever been on one. Um, Alicia Rastani, I think I've seen one of his videos. If he wants to come on my show, I wouldn't mind. Um, uh, Cred sounds familiar. Um, I don't know the other guys. I mean, I might reach out to Alicia Rastani if he wants to come on the show. He'd be welcome. I'd never have Bo Poli on the show. I think the guy's a scam. He just tries to sell you a newsletter with a bunch of garbage. And I'll tell you why I think Bo Poli is a scam. Uh, because the first time I heard him speak, he talked about why the S&P 500 is imminently going to crash. And it all had to do with the size of the Pyramid of Giza the same pyramid I was streaming in front of. In front of. I saw this presentation in 2016 uh, in Mexico. I sat there in the audience and watched him sell the crowd a bunch of crap on the reason for the, the imminent crash in the S&P 500 had to do with the fact that the bottom base of the Pyramid of Giza is like 600 feet across or whatever the hell it is, okay? Um, and it was the most ridiculous presentation about trading and markets I have ever seen in my life. And from that moment, I knew that Bo Poli was nothing but a scammer. It's worse than the Shemitah garbage, like way worse. It's worse than the Shemitah scammer, like five times worse than the Shemitah scammer. Have I ever eaten rabbit here? No, not here. I mean, they don't have much rabbit on the menu in the U.S. I like rabbit. I, I, I do eat it when I'm in other countries. The recent dip now taking more than 60 days, uh, while the parabolic 2017 dips uh, were more than 50 days. I guess I haven't been paying attention to that. My channel is three years old. Uh, my first video was uploaded in October of 2016. We're almost at, we're one month away from October 2019. So my channel is uh, coming up on its third birthday now. Well, this is the same question, right? Um, I can't choose an old coin. It's like asking me, Tone, um, which, uh, which online retailer will succeed in the US? And my answer is Amazon. And uh, you say, well, you can't pick Amazon. Which other online retailer uh, would you invest in? And my answer is, why would I? 
like, uh, why would I? I mean, who's the second biggest online retail in the, in the US? Is it Overstock that just fired its CEO? Like, like who else are you going to invest in? And it's even worse with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is a protocol. Everything else is a company. Like, look, the only successful altcoins are going to be the ones that become securities. Like, uh, maybe Ripple will be converted into a security and Ripple the company. You know, who the hell knows? I just know that right now it's very scammy. Like, would I have a problem with Binance token if BNB was a security? Of course not. But only a security. I think the I think the INX token is very scammy, and I have a problem. Well, I don't have a problem, but I think um, people like Jameson and Samson Mao are going to have a problem defending why they're involved in INX because I think it's a very scammy token, and everyone knows my view on that. You should become a quantitative financial analyst. I was a quantitative financial analyst. Make 30 million a year in fees by starting your own hedge fund. Uh, maybe that's possible. Maybe it's not, right? Like, am I going to sit here and, and do a Craig Wright? I don't want to make $30 million. But everyone wants $30 million, right? But think about this, right? Imagine if you can make $30 million, but your life is so miserable that you don't do anything and you stay in the basement your whole life, right? Well, what would you take, right? Um, let's say you can have $30 million that, uh, that you earn, but you can't leave the bay, but you're in prison, right? And imagine like, would you take $30 million to spend the next 25 years of your life in prison? Would you do it, right? Maybe you do it if you're 20, because then you get out and you're only 45. But what if you're 40? What if you're 50, right? You're going to take that trade? I wouldn't take that trade. You know, I'd be happy with 50 to 100,000 a year. Um, I'll never make it to 30 million. I'd be happy with, you know, I, I, I would take 20,000 living on a beach in Thailand for the next 30 years of my life than a million a year and sitting in a, in a prison. Because if you're sitting in a basement with eight monitors, trading and stressing and managing other people's money that's um it's not exactly the same as prison but it it's all it, it's a lot closer to prison than doing what i'm doing traveling the world you got to think about your priorities All right, let's take a look at some charts. I know I've kind of missed a lot of your questions. This is why I might, oh, this is why I might do one of these privately. Uh, this way I can answer all of your questions. So maybe next Saturday, if I'm free, uh, we might, maybe tomorrow we'll put it up for sale. Probably we'll start it off with 50 bucks, something small, some kind of a barrier to entry, right? So people are serious. When people, don't pay anything. They don't take anything seriously. So I might charge 50 bucks next Saturday. We'll do this for three to four hours. Uh, you can uh, maybe send in your questions ahead of time. We'll compile the questions. Um, does Philicone still even do TA? I, didn't he go crazy and disappear? I don't know. That's what I heard. And uh, maybe I'll do like a Q&A for people that actually want you know, that have serious questions and want serious answers. And we'll, we'll, we'll do it for three to four hours next weekend. And uh, I'll charge like somewhere between 50 and 100 bucks. We'll put it up for sale, see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I know who Philicone is at least. I wouldn't mind having him on my channel to do a trading show.
man, I used to really like what I was doing with trading like two or three years ago. I had so much time to even analyze the 1929 crash and all this stuff, but I also wasn't traveling this much. I didn't have this much of a fan base either. All right. So I keep getting this question of how many Bitcoins should a person own? Uh, I'll, I'll read the question. How many Bitcoin do you think a 40 year old person? Oh man, I need more logs for the fire. I'm gonna get those in a second and then we'll do some charting. How many Bitcoin do you think a 40 year old person should own in 2030 to be able to retire early? I think retiring at 40 is retiring pretty early enough. I almost, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much retired, right? Like when I quit my job five years ago now, geez, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, four and a half years ago now. When I quit my job four and a half years ago, I'm pretty much retired. I can do whatever I want. Isn't that what retirement is? I do whatever I want when I want it. I've never been busier in my life. But I do what I want. So uh, I say by the year 2030, if you have five to 10 Bitcoin, you're probably going to have a very comfortable life. Acquiring five Bitcoin right now is still reasonable. And if it goes down, it's even more reasonable. Do you know that you can send Bitcoin instantly using XRP Ledger? You're an idiot. Um, let me get some more logs. All right. Okay, let's go to some screen share. I'll take a break from the questions. I think we're gonna do a Q and A. Um, all right. So let's look at some charts. Uh, before we do that, uh, let me look at my telegram, see if there's any questions. Okay. Hey, before we do that, if I had to actually advertise everything I do, this will be an hour long show. So I try to simple it up. Uh, once again, hey guys, if you want to support the free content, uh, please check out the affiliates page. Uh, have, you know, trading subscribers. Uh, I mean, that, that, that actually helps, you know, if you're going to be paying trading view for a pro subscription, uh, use the link, uh, VPNs. Uh, if you're trading out of the U S you got two options right here. If you're trading out from outside the U S you're not a U.S. citizen or Canadian or whatever the jurisdictions say, they're a bit your option. Uh, it's just another option. If you're looking to buy and sell Bitcoin through gift cards, uh, Paxful is great. Check those out. Um, I do have an educational section. I almost never mention it. Uh, you can, you know, have lots of useful links. I wish I had time to rewrite it. Maybe I, maybe I should take like six months off and just revamp everything. Take a break. I might do that. Uh, indicator. If you're looking to trade with the TI sequential, my version of the TD sequential. And I keep forgetting to talk about the notification service. Maybe we'll do that on this stream a little bit later. How much battery power do I have? I am at 66%.
the workshops. Uh, we're going to separate workshops from webinars and stuff in the near future. We're going to redesign this a little bit this week. And um, we're going to put up a Q&A maybe for next Saturday. I got to make sure I'm not going away and I'm around either here in the woods or somewhere free. Uh, and uh, conferences, of course, but the calendar first. Uh, I'm waiting to get to September. There it is. We're in September. Finally, I don't have to go next. So I'm going to be speaking in Washington for the Black Blockchain Summit. Or yes, Black Blockchain Summit. I got it right. And uh, Honey Badger is always fun. Uh, that's out in Riga. Uh, Hackers Congress in Prague, another fun one. And um, then in Transylvania, uh, looking forward to that. And then hey, guys, check out the CC Forum. Uh, CC Forum is gonna be cool. It's a pretty big event with a lot of big names. Uh, a lot of the names you love and hate. Uh, many of the names we all hate, uh, but it will be fun. You know, look at the giant list of speakers. It's, uh, oh, I'm stuck on the scrolling here. There we go. There's the giant list of speakers uh, from Roger Veer to Vinay Gupta. Uh, oh, Chris Skinner. I remember giving him a hard time back in 2015. I was trolling him hard about his views on Bitcoin. Um, and I'm on there somewhere as well. Uh, so that's a good conference. I should have a, a very good discount code. I need to tweet out. I just did a couple of lords. Okay. Cool. It's going to be a good event. There I am. All right. Um, so finally, before we get to the charts, like I said, I can do announcements all day. The Web Summit. The Web Summit's coming. Coming. People have interest. Oh, I've seen the new images. Can't wait to get those up. Uh, so check out this website like tomorrow or something. It's going to be sweet. So this is a way to connect traders with funds. Uh, I already have uh, a fund that's definitely coming. Two more funds that are very interested. And we'll see. Hopefully, we'll get them there as well. And if not, it will be traders collaborating with traders. Really good event. All right. Uh, charts. Let's talk about charts real quick. I don't use the Brave browser. I think the Brave token was a scam like the Binance token. I'm tired of everyone around me creating their own money for their own personal gain. I think it's, I think it's scammy and I don't know if they should go to prison for it, but there are laws to prevent this kind of stuff. So looking at the weekly chart, we are going to flip over today. Uh, so we got about eight hours to go. I can only assume that the weekly chart is going to close at its current price. And this has a very bearish posture. And if next candle starts trading to the downside, I will uh, say that it's on a short trade. So I think it's not too late or not too early to take this red line and I'm going to stick it right here at nine, right below $940. So what that means is if next week the price of Bitcoin is dropping below $9,400, I said 940. If next week the price of Bitcoin is dropping below $9,400, I would consider activating a short trade on a weekly time scale. Okay. So the daily chart, this could coincide really, really well with a break right here on September 6th. So September 5th or 6th, if Bitcoin can kind of hang in there until September 5th or 6th, reset its count. See how right now Bitcoin is on a red six daily. If we can flip the count, to a green one, which we'll probably do tomorrow. Then we have another day of a red one. And then we have a red two around between the fourth and the sixth. 
a red two going below that red one, breaking this moving average and the bottom of this horizontal, the bottom of this triangle, uh, that becomes a short trade, not only from a weekly perspective, but a daily perspective. You say, well, wait a minute, you're an idiot. Why didn't you short up here? Well, there actually was a short trade up here because it was a daily nine. The triangle wasn't there yet. I didn't draw the triangle uh, until after this point came in, but there was a short trade up here. But I think this could be a better short trade. Not better as in how can a short trade at nine and a half thousand be better than a short trade at 12,000? Because it's a safer trade. This trade obviously will not fall $3,000 right away like this one did. It could, but it probably won't. But it's more likely to make you money. It's less likely to lose you a lot of money because this had a much higher probability of going to 20,000 than a breakdown from here. And we just popped a little bit, right? Remember, I am looking for a pop to approximately $10,000 and it's happening even slower than I anticipated. So if you ask me, oh, we're popping right now. Look at that, look at that. This candle was red a second ago. Let's go to a 12 hour chart. Not much here. Let's go to a four hour chart. Uh, the four hour chart is not very helpful right now. All right, come on, move. Not very helpful at all. I'm gonna zoom, uh, there, there's nothing to zoom in on. I'm gonna look at the bird's eye view of the four hour chart. And it's in a bearish posture. That's all I can tell you. Look at the 15 minute chart, here it is. Here's the 15 minute chart. We just popped. How much did we pop? What's the range on this candle? Open, 95.80, high. 96.72, not bad. That is a 100, it's not that great. It's only $100, but it did it in like a few minutes. Let's see if it amounts to something bigger. Uh, minor revenue. I still think it's gonna hit this yellow line again. If it's before the halving, it's gotta hit 3K. If it's after the halving, it's gotta hit 6K. Total market cap, that's not a good look for the total market cap. I think the total market cap could easily go to new, to new swing lows. Does that mean Bitcoin has to go to new swing lows? It does not, right? Bitcoin could be double its current price and the total market cap could be at new lows. Bitcoin dominance is looking great. Uh, sure, coins don't want to come up. Oh, well. Well, that sucks if shit coins don't want to come up. Here's gold. Uh, well, gold's not trading right now. That's not a very positive looking week. S&P, uh, interesting. I like it. I'm bullish. If we can close above this green line, that's very bullish. And the weekly scale looks great. Looks great. S&P just closed at a new five-week high, right? What's the close here? 29.32, what's the close here? Ah, 29.26. So Bitcoin just closed at a new four-week high. Just a smidge preventing it from closing at a new five-week high. That's pretty damn good. Um, I want to show you guys something. I'm going to open up. So 
in the video description, there is a link to the notification service and it's still free. You have to know how to trade TD. This notification service is going subscription, but it's not gonna be follow the leader. You're paying for notifications and you have to make your own trading decisions. Yes, that's different, I'm making you think. But here are the alerts. I'm gonna scroll up. Uh, I'm gonna scroll up, I don't know, a week or two. I'm just gonna find something random that I've commented on. And something in the traditional space. Let's go to, let's go to the middle of August. And markets have been volatile, right? Let's go to the middle of August. I'm gonna grab a stock um, and I'm gonna take a look at its chart. Let's grab a stock. Did I comment on these? Okay, let's grab this one. TTWO. I don't know what it looks like and we'll see the date that it was sent on. TTWO, what date was this? August 16th, perfect. I don't even know what TTWO is. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna throw it right there. Here is TTW, oh wait, you know what? That's a small one. Let me, let me get a better picture. Here we go. Here's TTWO. That is a double nine that did not break the setup trend. Is it a great nine to sell? It's not a great nine to sell because it's not at a new all time high. But if I go through the chart, right? There was a nine right here that turned into a decent opportunity. Um, I wanna see how this stock turned out. I would have been interested in watching this nine for a potential shorting opportunity at first sign of weakness. My stop loss would be just above the swing high. And if I am not, uh, and if I wanna play it safe, my stop loss would be um, uh, based on the sequential itself, which tells you to put the stop loss above the risk line. Now, I don't know what the risk line is. The candle has to first finish as a nine and then it establishes a risk line, but um, the risk line would be terrible. The risk line would be all the way up there. So I wouldn't do that, right? So I have two stop loss choices. If I short this nine and I can short on the nine itself, uh, my stop loss would be either just above the swing high or just above the setup trend line. It's not that much of a difference. It's like $2 on a $130 stock, okay? I'm gonna be more conservative. I would set my stop loss right above the swing high unless the nine itself gave me a swing high. I have no idea how the stock performed after this date. This is, I, I we're about to find out. Um, I can't tell you that I would be shorting right here. I would need to wait and see how this candle turned out. But when would I short? Uh, I would certainly get out of my bullish position. That's for damn sure. When would I short? I would consider shorting at first sign of weakness. I need a reversal candle or a red one following a nine, or I can just take a small stab on the nine. I'm also conscious that this nine is on its way to a 13. And that's coming soon, all right? But let's see how shorting this nine could have turned out, even though it's not the most perfect nine to short. So this is T, uh, what's the ticker here? Let me see, what is the ticker? TTWO, let's go and take a look. TTWO. Now let's see what happened since that day. This is the daily chart. Let's find that nine. That was August, what am I missing? Or was that weekly? Oh, that was the weekly chart. Let, let's find that nine on a weekly scale. There it is. Let's wait for the sequential. And there's that nine, look at that. Look at that weekly chart. Oh, I, I, I really should have picked a daily chart. I didn't realize it was a weekly chart. 
So that's a weekly nine. That is a reversal candle. So what does that mean? That means if I had shorted this based on weekly charts, I would have shorted it sometime in the middle of this week as it showed me weakness in creating the reversal candle. So that means right now, this trade would either be completely break even as a short trade, or I would be losing a little bit of money because my stop loss would always be above the swing high. So, and this is what the stop losses webinar was all about. My stop loss on this trade would have been right here. I would have waited for the top to be made on this candle. And I probably would have entered it somewhere on the bottom half of this candle as it's creating the reversal candle. So that means right now, I'm probably down a little tiny bit on this trade and I'm probably already exiting this trade or I will next week for a tiny loss because now by giving me a green two above a green one, above the nine, above the body of the nine, I am now bullish this stock for a triple nine and see this eight? I'm now waiting for this eight to get to a 13. And I am now bullish the market overall. So let me go find a daily chart. I don't like the fact, I don't like the weekly chart. Let me find a daily example. Here's a daily example from August 20th. I wonder if I commented on this. I don't know, but let's, let's try another example. That did not, that was not a good. And this is, this is free right now, by the way, uh, these notifications. So here is a daily reversal candle nine on what company is this? STZ, never heard of it, okay? Look how we reversed on a nine here and ran into this one. We also reversed on a nine here and both of these became price flips. This is the difference between the TI and the TD. TD will not tell you this, uh, but my code does. Look at this, another nine. So this would have been three gorgeous trades in a row, very profitable off the daily nine. Why would I not do a fourth trade? Even if this trade loses me money, I just had three profitable trades had I been paying attention to this asset this, the, the entire summer. Though I probably would have been nervous about holding it through earnings, okay? So let's go and take a look at what happens. I would short, of course I would short this. Why not? I would have made money shorting this and I would have made money buying that and I would have made money buying that. Why would I not short this one? Let's see how that short would have turned out. Um, STZ, let's go look. I'm randomly picking these things. I have no idea what they're gonna look like. STZ, oops. If you think there was like a hidden plan that I checked these stocks, you clearly don't know me very well. Where is, oh, now I'm on a weekly. I'm like, okay, I have to go to daily. So there it is, right? So the nine itself, uh, when I short the nine itself on a daily scale, I would be, more cautious with i would be a little more loose with my stop loss right if i'm shorting the nine itself i don't want to use the stop loss of the nine itself right i need something with a little bit of headroom so what are my options for a stop loss one option is just above the most recent swing high which i believe would be higher than the nine yes it was so right there what's the high of this candle the high of this candle and those that took the stop losses webinar, they know exactly what I'm talking about right now. Um, the high of the scandal is 205.59. The high of this candle, sorry, 29, 30 cents lower. And the highs of these candles are lower still. So if I'm shorting this nine, now remember this nine is not exactly a reversal candle. My other reasonable option for a stop loss is the risk line. This is why the risk line is there. The risk line is a stop loss line for those that are shorting off the nine. 
If I'm shorting a red two going below a red one that followed the nine, it's a little bit different. If I'm shorting this nine, it's also different. If I'm shorting this nine, right, the eight is much higher. So I can set my stop loss above the eight. But if I'm shorting this nine, I don't have a higher swing high. That's also my higher swing high. That's my initial stop loss. And this trade certainly was making you money. And it bounced off the double moving average. And right now, I would be completely out of this trade uh, on a stop loss on the way back up. So how much money would I have made from this trade? Probably very little. Maybe I would have gotten out at the end of this big one candle making at best Let's say I got in the middle of this stock. Let's say I got in at 200, 250. And the best case scenario for me, I'm getting out of this thing if it crosses back above 200. You know, one, I made 1% 1 on this trade. Is that something to, you know, start dancing around your living room for? Of course not. Was it a safe trade to increase your capital? Yes, it was. And that's how you use the notification service, you know? Because the prior three times, you made pretty good money buying these nines. You buy at first sign of weakness. You buy at first sign of strength. Um, maybe not at the top, right? Maybe you're shorting right here. Maybe you're buying right there. Maybe your stop loss got hit here and you feel like crap. Happens, okay? But you didn't lose any money. You didn't lose any money. Looking at, uh, yeah, I don't mind looking at MGI. Ripple invested in that failing company. That is a gorgeous reversal candle on an eighth. I, I would never ever short a four dollar stock but if i was a speculator and i bought in on the or if i was an insider and i knew the ripple garbage was coming uh i would be getting out of this thing i think it's going to go down and go down hard i don't think ripple can save moneygram and moneygram certainly can't save ripple Thank you for answering my question regarding retirement at 40. I like your thoughts. Thanks for the great content. Greetings from across the globe. Thank you, Mr. Spunk. All right, Barry, life's still okay. One second, I have to answer a friend. All right, let me see what else we can do. What character am I in the movie, The Big Short? I'm the guy that went broke shorting real estate six months early. I was early and I ran out of capital. So I had to go get a job at Bear Stearns that went down due to the real estate crisis. It's really ironic. The biggest irony in my life. We can look at Binance coin. We can look at that scam coin. Should be in my shit coin list. Is it? It's not. You can add it. We can also look at it in BTC terms. Sorry, in USD terms. Oh, 
That's ugly. Oh, this guy is going down. I'm happy to see that. People are starting to realize that Binance coin is scammy. Look at the beautiful nine right at the high. If you're expecting every high to have a nine, you don't know how to trade. But if you have a nine at the high, you may want to pay attention. Look at this beautiful nine sell right there, right at a moving average rejection. Gorgeous. And we've broken the setup trend and we're working on another nine. I would be short this thing, looking for another nine on a setup. A 13 on a countdown, you've broken setup trend, uh, looks like a disaster. Looks horrendous. Versus the dollar, not much better. Look at this. Look at this posture. You're gonna, you're, you might break setup trend. You're at a 13 buy, but I don't think that's gonna save it. You're working on a double nine setup. Uh, all the moving averages are declining. They're not all below each other yet. Still need a couple of death crosses. But uh, Binance coin is not looking good. Those that are bag holders of the Binance coin, not good for you. Look how volatile this stupidity is. Let's go back to stocks. I want, I want to look at one more. A historical example from the notification service. Something random. Oh, it says it's called alerts. And the link is in the video description to join in for free for now. I'm going to go back to August. We'll pick something that's a couple of, you know, a week or two old, something on a daily scale. I love TD on a daily scale. All right. What day was this? No, nah, it's too close to today. Let's go. Let's look for something older, maybe. Maybe I'll look for something in very early August. I have to scroll a lot, though. We notify pretty often. How many viewers am I losing? Hey, we're still above 600. Great. Let me go to early August so we can evaluate something. I mean, let's find a buying opportunity. Though the month of August was very, very crappy for stocks. Uh, yeah, here's something. All right, let's see how this did. I like this one. Here was the notification. Boom. What is this? Comerica. What's the ticker? Comerica. CMA. CMA. Here is CMA. Well, what do we know about CMA? Well, here was a nine on an up gap that didn't amount to anything. So, you know, if you got in, stop loss got hit. Here is a nine that led to a one to four candle correction followed by downside. And that downside completed right here at 13, which caused a significant rally. Good enough rally, 67 to 74. That's a pretty damn good rally. That's almost 10%. Wait, that's more than 10%. $10 on a, no, seven, yeah, it's about 10%. And then we collapsed and we have strength on a nine. I would be looking to buy into this around 61.50. I'm buying on strength on a nine and I'd set my stop loss probably just below the $60 area in the beginning. But after this thing rallies all the way to 64, I would then potentially be raising that stop loss as high as break even to make sure that either I hit a home run or I don't lose anything. Let's see how the stock did. This was around um, August 13th. What was the ticker again? CMA. Let's go, I'm curious, let's go find out. All right, come on, there we go. 
Go to CMA. And, you're, and you exited with the stop loss. Because the next day, the next day you gap down. So it gapped through your stop loss. Now, uh, and that is, a, that is a trade that you would take a tiny, tiny loss on, uh, but your chance at a reward was great. I would consider getting back in uh, if I was trading this. Now, also keep in mind that if you trade TD sequential according to the textbook, your stop loss did not get hit. According to the textbook, your stop loss is this line. That is the risk line. That is how much you should be willing to give your trade on a stop loss. And uh, for me, this line is a little too loose. I'd rather lose a little bit of money more often uh, and not risk my capital because sometimes this line's kind of far. And to me, this line is a little bit far. Uh, again, those that have attended my entries, exits, and stop losses would have known that if I entered this trade at, say, $61.50 here, I would have exited tr this trade right around here. I would have... and. I would have exited this trade right probably around here. I would have exited at 60.40. Um, and those that attended my uh, webinar on entries, exits, and stop losses know exactly why that would have happened. So that would have been the loss, right? You can calculate a percentage on that. You can, um, and the percentage on that would be uh, what? That would be, Two dollars, no, one dollar, 64, 61, 50 to 60, 40, one dollar on a 60 dollar stock. So maybe a two percent loss, two and two, two, two percent loss on a trade, 0.2 percent loss on a portfolio, which is my other webinar on risk management. All right, guys, I think I'm ready to call it a day. I'm, I'm even too lazy to walk through my stocks here. But it's time for me to go to another barbecue. I would not touch Netflix right now. I would just wait on most stocks. AMD. Oh, I was bullish AMD. This is from the options webinar. This arrow is from the options webinar. Setting up, uh, it, 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 it was used to set up an, uh, an options leverage trade for a potential in AMD to go to 45. Ooh, I like this. I like NVIDIA. I like it. And Tilray, of course, we're gonna be keeping a close eye on Tilray. We'll be keeping a close eye on Tilray over the next few weeks. Starbucks, still bullish. Ooh, what is this? Nah, no comment. Twitter. I like Twitter. Twitter looks like it's ready for a breakout. Nice cup and handle at the high. Roku's been on a tear. Looks great. Uh-oh. That's a problem. Did we notify about Roku? Not every stock is in our um, notifications yet. That's a nice nine um, on Roku. I should probably throw it into the notification service. We'll throw it in there this weekend. That's a nice reversal candle. Uh, I would be getting out of Roku right now. 150, nice round number. I'd be careful with Roku. Had a huge run. 
50% run in a few weeks. That's enough, don't you think? I'd be taking my profits out of Roku. Oh God, GoPro is in the dumpster. So is Fitbit. I'm gonna be very patient with Lyft and Uber. I'd love to buy them, a Lyft below 40 and Uber below 20. Or maybe below 30. Let's not get too carried away here. Uber is coming up on a daily nine soon. I wonder if it'll be a weekly nine as well. Yep, weekly nine and daily nine are coming. I would love to buy Uber on a weekly and daily nine combination in two weeks. In two weeks, there's a nine coming. Maybe we can get a 13 and a nine on a daily with a nine on a weekly, if we're lucky, in two to three weeks from now. That'd be nice. All right, guys, uh, once again, uh, check out the Financial Summit in Bali. Uh, really good. We're going to get together a lot of traders. I uh, can't wait for the new updated website on NIST. Uh, I've seen the new pictures. They're amazing. Uh, most people here have their own YouTube channels. Willie doesn't. Uh, Benzan actually does. We got to put it in there. He doesn't do much. He has a his historical YouTube channel. And uh, Ugly certainly does. And uh, we have a few more pictures coming. Uh, got some funds that are going to be there. Got more traders that are going to be there. And all those pictures are coming. All right, guys. Should be a lot of fun. And uh, check that out. And check out my travel schedule. See where I'll be by clicking on the word calendar. If you want to request me as a speaker, right here. Speaker request form. Fill that out. Somebody will take a look. Okay. Talk to you all. On the next one, guys, my fire is almost done. Got a couple of logs there. And i um, going to be heading off to another barbecue later. But enjoy the forest. Bye, all. Talk to you all on the next one. Hope you enjoyed the little Q&A. Uh, we're probably going to do a, Q a paid Q&A. That's only Q&A for uh, people that are serious and want to pay, you know, between 50 and 100 bucks. It's instead of a Patreon, which I don't really want to do because I'm kind of lazy to figure out how Patreon works. Um, see you all. On the next one, guys.